Good afternoon, everyone. I am back out in the hunting blind. It is early doe season tomorrow here in Michigan, and rifle hunters can go out and, and shoot a early season doe. Now, it's still pretty warm. I think it's 70 today, but it's getting very cool at night, so I thought I'd take take the Hyper Raptor out tomorrow morning and see if I can get an early season doe. I prefer early season doe uh, as long as they don't have the really young fawns with them over late season doe. I shot one a few years ago in December and it had a couple little ones in it and I know that's kind of what the DNR wants. Lower the herd a little bit. I personally am not a fan. If other people want to do that that's fine you know hunting needs to be done we need to lower the deer population especially in michigan so many crashes <laughs> um passed a couple on the road today going fishing actually so i think it's important i personally would rather shoot one early in the season as long as it doesn't have a, a spotted fawn with it if i'm comfortable with the fawn being old enough then maybe but hopefully i'll have a have an old mature one come in by itself. So you can kind of see off to the side here, a little bit out that window. That was planted with rye and in front here was also planted with rye. It's still coming in. You can actually see some of the seed did not go in very far. You know, it's just so hard out here. We rake it, we, t you know, we scratch it up, we plant the seed. We scratch it up again to cover it back up. We roll over it, and then driving rain messes everything up. So hopefully it comes in good. I do have lots of footprints in there. There's a creek just on the other side of my field here, and then I have a pond behind me. So I think we get a fair amount of traffic through here. But getting ready, all that to say, getting ready for the season tomorrow. Sorry I'm rambling. So a couple days, chance at getting a doe. I'm going to try it out. I believe in coming up in the blind and shooting your bow before the season. So you know, hey, this angle, this is where the arrow is going. So I've got it set where I like to shoot my deer. And it's, it's just under 20 yards. And I'm going to put some more rounds through the Hyper Raptor here. And just watch that cable, watch that stuff, make sure it's going good. Uh, I don't have the lighted knocks with me, but a couple of you guys said, hey, make sure your knocks click in really good. I'm going to work on that. I'm going to work on not being stupid and wrapping my rope around the scope. So just another come along. Let's let's shoot some more rounds through it. Let's see how it works. And, you know, just, just testing it out, making sure it's solid before the season. Okay, so here it is, the Hyper Raptor. 410 something to note guys if you do not they send you a, a spacing piece on your quiver that can go here if you don't do that it's right up against your handle and i don't i only use the quiver to bring my arrows out and then i take it off so for me i wasn't going to put it on but i might end up putting it on because it's just way too tight in here for anything and this latch is extremely hard, extremely hard to undo with such low clearance. I don't know if you can see that or not, but. So I would just say, put that spacer in there. I need to. Let me get this undone and <laughs> we'll keep rolling here. So I am now a very firm believer in waxing a lot and real lube. I just did some real lube. Barnett, talking to Jackie at Barnett, they say you can use their their wax on both. Um, I I went with some real snot, uh, talked to the guy at the local, local shop there, and he suggested that. So I have it, so I'm using it. But I am gonna use the wax on the cables because I wanna keep anything from happening if I can. All right, I've got that all waxed and ready to go. I'm gonna cock it. But before I do that, guys, I wanna talk to you about something that maybe you have a stand like this or a blind like this where you like to set it on top of a piece of wood. Now, 
with my old game crusher, my quiver had a piece right here that came down. So when I set it on there, I had a lot of clearance between the bottom of that and the actual limbs. Now with this one, you don't have that. So I was worried when I set it on here, am I gonna have clearance? Now if you look close guys, you have just enough clearance that you are not gonna hit your limbs when you fire a shot. I think that's pretty important to know. If, if setting it on this, your limbs kick out and you hit this, well then you're in trouble. And then you risk breaking things. So just something to know if you're looking at this one, go ahead and know you do have just enough, just enough, and I mean just enough guys, to take that shot. If you want to be a little more comfortable, I would advise maybe sticking it up on there like that, something like that. Cause there's, there's not a lot of space there. Just, just know that it will work, but if you're angling up enough, it might not be great. So you can see there, I don't have a ton of, don't have a ton of tipping room there. So if a deer gets up close, I'm in trouble blind here I don't have a ton of room and I'm here by myself today to show you cocking it in the blind but there is a lot of room because it is so narrow I will show you that if I decide to stand up I've got plenty of room to cock this here in the blind so you can see because the limbs are so narrow I've got enough clearance to cock that pretty easily even if I was this way I should have enough room to cock this here it's nice that it's so thin guys this is the area that concerns me right right there uh, one of you guys commented on this and I just feel like that is gonna fray you can see it's kind of got a sharp edge I'm afraid it's gonna fray the cables and I'm wondering if that's what happened last time I think that's probably the trouble spot on this and hopefully, hopefully it doesn't cut through that cable and cause issues. So I'm going to have to watch that, but got it all cocked and I'm going to shoot some arrows out there and see how it feels out here in the blind. So I'm really going to try to get that, the back of that arrow to click in. That was another comment you guys have been saying, make sure that knock clicks onto the cable. So I wanted to show you how hard it is to actually get this to click, guys. Look at... You have to push that thing pretty stinking hard. So I don't think I am getting it to click when it's cocked. That's a little concerning. Okay, I got the arrow to click in. I had to reach up here because I don't want my hands by the string. I've been struggling that with this bow. So I went up here, farther up, and I pushed really hard, and that arrow finally clicked in. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure I'm gonna be comfortable with a broadhead doing that. <sighs> Guess I'll figure that out. But for now, if you're having trouble getting that arrow to click onto the string, try reaching up in front of the halo and giving it a pretty good push. That seems to, to lock it in. So I, I haven't been shooting it great for, oh, seven shots. I think I've done, I've done about 10 shots. And I think this 11th one is the first one where it actually locks in good. So I don't think that's on the users. I think a lot of us are probably going to have that problem until we realize that, that you really have to push that arrow to lock it in. Again, it's something I'm not used to. With the old half moon knocks, it just sat, you know, you push it up against it, you're good. So it's a little different. I'm not going to say it's bad. It's just something I have to get used to. And if you're doing it as well, if you have one of these, you know, I've had a few comments saying, hey, you got to really push on that thing. And you're right. You do have to push on it. So make sure you're doing that. And we'll see if this shot's any different, if it's a little better, if it sounds different. We'll, we'll try it out.
So I could audibly hear something different with that shot. I'm not saying it was bad, just a different sound. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to catch that in filming for you, but there, I will try. There is a difference in the sound it made when that arrow was clicked in. It's, it sounded better somehow. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's the right way to do it, so that it should sound better. But just something to keep an eye on, guys. Make sure that's clicked in there. And thank you to whoever it was that told me I needed to make sure I was doing that. I appreciate it. One more thing to note, guys. These hyper flight arrows. Well, probably can't get it to focus for you there, but they have a slight little little ridge there maybe you can see it there there's a slight little ridge right where the red meets the gray of the arrow so when you go to pull it out of a target that catches a little bit it's not a big deal just know that that's going to happen i think if you had a hard target over a soft target wouldn't be as bad but just something to consider again just trying to show everything that comes with getting the new Hyper Raptor for you guys. So right there, there's a slight little click when you push it back. That isn't the click. That arrow is still not in there yet. So as, as awkward as it is for me, I'm reaching up here and I'm pushing, I'm making sure my safety's on because I don't need that shooting. I'm pushing quite hard. There, did you hear that? That's what you have to do guys. Glad someone mentioned that. Thank you. And then you can actually see that it's seated correctly. I'm gonna see if I can show you guys that um, on my camera here. So if you look right there, you can see the string is inside of that knock all the way. That's, that's how it's supposed to be. I get used to it I actually kind of like it hey guys stinking mosquitoes good night of course they come out in the later evening and just eat you alive when you're trying to hunt so Hey, why not practice with mosquitoes eating you alive, right? <laughs> but after day three of shooting this, I really like it now. The cable looks okay. I'm still a little concerned about where that sharp edge is. I'm keeping a very close eye on that. But so far, awesome. Ever since I got the replacement and someone told me that trick about making sure the knock is clicked in all the way. I'm really liking this bow, guys. Hopefully I can get a deer this weekend and kind of show that to you guys. But if you're looking for an affordable, that's what I'm all about. Affordable, fast, powerful, accurate, comfortable, adjustable crossbow. Go ahead and check this out. There will be a few things you got to get used to because a few things are a little different if you're not used to them like me. But once you get used to them, I think you'll actually like them.
And don't sleep on that rope ball holder. The rope, little ball that holds your rope cocking device. That thing is handy, very handy. Probably one of my favorite features and it's just this little ball. But it does its job, it does it well, guys. Check it out, we'll catch you next time, hopefully, with a doe on the ground.